Hi everyone, this is the longer tutorial for the BattleZips uh, privacy stack presented at ETH Denver 2022. Uh, we will be working on building the state channels, uh, which is essentially just ECDH over um, WebSockets, and then uh, just going back and forth and increasingly stuffing our Merkle tree with uh, the game state instead of putting it on chain that will be rolled up that that merkle tree will be rolled up on chain in a single proof of battleship game correctness essentially and that's something we'll go into when we go into it <laughs> but you know i'm sure a lot of you guys are hungry now for this information and we wanted to put this together to provide people with the ability to instantly get started based off the code we wrote. Um, Jordi Bellina has written an insanely powerful software development kit that both now Macy and Tornado Cash are, are relatively widely known and adopted CIRCOM projects, and I think it's going to continue to be a trend, and uh, hopefully this helps put people ahead. So let's get into it. Um, the very first thing, the absolute very first thing when you're building this project you have to be thinking about is the zero knowledge. The key value proposition is the privacy in Battleship uh, that is provided from being able to have verifiable computations on-chain with hidden information. What we're going to be doing today is just installing everything we need in order to get the code working so you can start to work backwards and reverse engineer what we have written and, and build your own things and, and you know hopefully start to scale up the community. So technically really the first thing you need is CIRCOM but we're gonna clone this. Uh, basically JavaScript and there's a good amount of bash and then we've obviously got our ZK and Solidity. If you do not have CIRCOM installed uh, here is a tutorial on installing the CIRCOM ecosystem, and that will be uh, included. It'll pop up. Whatever. Follow this. Do not follow anything else you see on the internet. If you see anything with NPM, uh, that is deprecated. And assuming you have done that, which I have, um, these are really just the steps, but again, take a look. Um, you can do CIRCOM version. And we want to see CIRCOM 2.0.x or 2.x.x if this is far in the future. Um, but again, that NPM, uh, it, it will show you a completely different version if you install it. So if you do not have this version right here, you've done something wrong. Um, and this should work totally the same on OSX and Unix. I If you don't have uh, Unix-based distribution, I'm very sorry, you're going to have to figure that part out. So I was recording the PTAO section and I had a question on exactly why I was doing the things I was doing, so uh, I wanted to know uh, if Plonk removed the need for a Powers of Tau ceremony, and I will show you the interaction that just took place. So you can literally see here uh, how the zero knowledge community works. Uh, Iden three is wonderful. Uh, Jordi Bellina, wonderful. This man is actively on the ground. There are bosses and there are leaders, and then there is Jordi Bellina. Um, but he has created a, a wonderful software development kit, and he's also still here uh, with all of the private paid things he's doing. Um, making sure that this software development kit is uh, somewhat supported. You can see literally uh, 12.13, 12.14. Okay, so there you go. Plonk means you only need PTAL. A, a good um, note that if you're going down the CIRCOM route, um, highly encourage you, this will be linked as well now, um, highly encourage you to go to the IDEN3 Telegram so now we can go into the directory, install it. So you can see we have CIRCOM tester, CIRCOM lib, 
circumlibjs. Uh, we'll get into in granular depth how we use them in the courseware in the next six months, but uh, for now, uh, we have circom tester, which lets you test your circuits without a lot of overhead, your dot circom files. Uh, circom lib, which is very much like open Zeppelin contracts, um, in that it provides a library of primitives for the circom language uh, that are very critical to like signal muxing, for instance, which we'll uh, get into in um, a little bit here, actually, because it's so important, but we'll get into again in a lot of depth uh, later. Um, and circumlibjs, which is just a, a JavaScript library for driving uh, all of this, and it uh, gives us a lot of grief with our front end, as um, we'll show you later in the video. And we also have snarkjs, which is the main proving API used for all of this. So all of our circom um, libraries are used either to create circuits or test them or to maybe interact with generate the correct data, um, make EDDSA signatures, hashes, stuff like that, um, that are uh, easily readable by Circom will come from circumlibjs, but snarkjs is, is what will actually take the circuits that come out of Circom and create zero knowledge proofs. And just for right now, if you don't know what a circuit is, just think about it like a smart contract. It's it's not at all like a smart contract, but it is very much like a, a smart contract in that it's how you're going to write code for this new language. Like, let's actually pop our environment open. I've done all of this in a terminal so far, but... So we can go take a look at the readme. Um, so we can actually control shift V and render it just so we don't have to worry about going back and forth. And we can see this powers of tau ceremony. This is powers of tau 15, so that means 2 to the 15th because that's the number of constraints that ours needs. Uh, if, if you go in the documentation, and you can see in the documentation that it actually is 12 instead of 15, 12 here as well uh, throughout it. And that is because the circuits being generated here are 2 to the 12. They only have that many constraints. So uh, because we need more, we do 15. And if we go back to our scripts, which ptau is going to be the very first thing that we run. It goes all the way up to 2 to the 28. Um, unless you have a data center, I would recommend not worrying about it and instead using uh, a download. So you can see that Hermes, which is uh, essentially Jordi Bellina, um, released at one point um, a public Powers of Tau ceremony that you can use, and this is um, pretty trustless if you download it. We're going to go through generating your own as well. Uh, in a future version, we will have a script that pulls um, the correct powers of tau out of this drop box right here. And um, if you want to also just manually drop it in, you can find whichever one you need. So in our case, we would want this one. Powers of tau 28 is 300 gigabytes. So if you really need to get up to these levels, um, you're probably either you really know what you're doing and have a data center and a bunch of cryptographic knowledge um, or you're doing something wrong. So um, definitely we can stick with 15 and for most people with a modern computer um, like an M1 chip it will go quicker than uh, described right here. You can see that the resources on figuring out all of this stuff on their powers of tau is not exactly accessible. So I'd be lying if I knew exactly what's going on here, but um, essentially we start the ceremony, uh, make these three contributions with entropy we inject from uh, the Unix shell, and then we verify it, which is technically optional, inject some, um, like a random known beacon, um, evaluated on this number that is just, again, known and chosen. But And that is all then used to produce our powers of tau n, and n in our case is 15, 2 to the 15th, uh, final.ptau, and this is used um, 
to generate these circuits, it is not actually used really past the initial circuit generation. And as just like a developer, um, setting aside the security vulnerabilities of not being conscious about how PTAL works, powers of TAL works, um, you will mostly put it in the back of your mind after this point. So let's run it. And this will take a while. So that's not that great. That's nine and a half minutes. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Go make a cup of coffee. Go harass your pet if you work remote. But go find something to do for 10 minutes. Uh, but go find something else to do because uh, your computer is going to be using a lot of resources on this cryptographic math. So uh, just let it do its thing and it'll do its thing. And now that we have our Powers of Tau Ceremony file, and again, if you feel like it, you can go um, download one from Hermes. But what we can do now is set up our circuits. And what we do right here is very quickly just make sure that if on the first install there is no um, zero knowledge key, Z key folder uh, to make that. So we do that. And now we have the compilation of the circuits into the two main components that we need. And there's a lot of different parts. Uh, you can use like C and um, you can export to JSON and you don't need any of that. A lot of that stuff is for uh, command line and uh, bash, and we're not going to be dealing with any of that. We're gonna be showing you how to do all of this within a JavaScript file. And the only things you do need are the rank one constraint system uh, file. And this is how the code you write is then compiled down into a circuit encoding. And this is again beyond the scope of anything we're going to talk about directly in this video, but tons of reading out there on R1CS. Um, and then the WASM, and this is actually um, in our application, we host the WASM file we generate from this command right here uh, on IPFS and access it from uh, an HTTP call. So we, uh, this is a very important step. And we'll show exactly, again, what uh, happens with board and shot um, in a little bit, but let's keep going. This comes back to how we were talking in the uh, IDEN3 telegram about uh, the trusted setup. This right here, I believe, probably will not be in um, a, a plonk setup. Um, this is toxic waste that is generated here, I, I believe. Um, somewhere within this, and uh, yeah, and Growth 16 was just easier because it was older. It seemed a little easier to use, but um, in the future again, we'll we'll just start trying to onboard people with Plonk. But you can see, we set up the Z key files, and then we start generating keys and commits with entropy. To uh, and if you only had one circom file, you'd only need one but we generate commits to the Z keys, and these are used to prove this. And these Z keys are hosted from IPFS and accessed by our front end when the prover needs to encrypt the data in their circuit um, when they send it through the WASM circuit. So both of those are accessed um, and very important. And then verification of the Z key technically is optional. This is not optional. This is the same beacon. Um, optional. And this is optional, but we actually do as well. You check in the client when a proof is generated whether or not it, it passes with, with the verification key before we submit it. So we do, this is not really optional. So this is a special part right here. So this is really one of the big reasons to use SnarkJS right here. Um, and that is that we can export our verifier to L1. And that's awesome. And, and what we used to have to do was uh, 
change the version because it's stuck in 0.6.11, but we actually figured out a way with Hardhat to um, set multiple compilers. So essentially, this is just uh, a pattern that you could potentially use if you wanted uh, an easy automated way to export your export different verifiers um, in the same directory and not have to worry about their um, domain, their namespace overlapping. And I've just removed some clutter that's not supposed to be here. I will also remove that from the repository, so it, you shouldn't have it to begin with, but if you saw it earlier in the video. Um, all that should be generated is the PTAL. Um, and what we're next going to do, and we're going to run the circuit generation as we've just described um, by doing yarn setup. And you can see right here, it's going to begin. It's created our uh, rank one constraint system files. Uh, it's made a Z key where it's going to start dropping in the different uh, components. Um, and it's generating the WASM right here. Uh, there are these pieces of code, uh, generate witness and witness calculator, that we don't care much about. It's really just the WASM. We're going to use the witness calculator and uh, everything needed from SnarkJS. And there we go, in a little over three minutes. So, a little more manageable. And now that we've done that, we're, we, we've done it. Every time you make changes to your CIRCOM code, you will have to actually recompute. You will have to rerun yarn setup. You will never, after having this PTAL file, or if you download the PTAL file, uh, have to recompute it. So, now that we've done that, let's go take a little more look at our contracts before we get into the circuits. Let's go take a look first at iVerifier. So we split this video into multiple parts, which is why the continuity is probably a little weird, but there should be three videos dropping at once, so yeah. Uh, go check out our Discord, that's going to be the best place for you to ask questions about this or uh, any other builds that you want uh, help with or just any discussion around zero knowledge. But you can also subscribe to us here or follow us on Twitter as we release more CIRCOM zero knowledge content in the future. So check the description, links to all the socials are there, as well as links to all of the content referenced in this video. So uh, yeah, see you in the next one.